All right, so I decided I'm going to replace this. I'm going to re redesign this, <laughs> sort of. Um, and I'm going to replace this on my radio. And I'm going to put in a PC board to drive the LEDs and provide a, a, a di digital to analog conversion to drive the VCO and then uh, be able to monitor the VCO and change the voltage so that the, uh, the frequency is stable. And so um, baby steps, I'm not going to bite it all off in one chew, but um, I did design a PC board. So let's take a look at what I did and what I'm going to do. Okay, we'll take a look at that. Okay, so first of all, I've got some LEDs. Okay, I've got uh, three uh, seven segment LEDs plus a, a fourth. Uh, and so I need uh, 12 lines plus one for this one. So I need 13, 13 data lines to drive these. And um, so what I'm gonna put here is a couple shift registers. So these will be eight bit shift registers. And so I'll have 16, I'll have 16 lines and I only have to use three lines of my, um, of my Arduino. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put that in there and The other thing I'm going to do is to output a voltage. Okay, so um, The part that I've got is Maybe an 8-bit DAC. I I Want I want a better DAC. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put in a DAC and it's a I squared C Okay, so that's only another two lines and it's a 12-bit a DAC. Okay, so we'll get nice We'll get a real nice uh, voltage out of out of that. All right, and then we'll have a uh, Arduino Nano, Nano, and uh, I decided to go ahead and put a display uh, just because it's I squared C as well, so it doesn't eat up anything, and maybe a couple switches. Okay, maybe a switch here and a switch here. Maybe we'll have two switches, something like that. All right. Then I started thinking about this 12-bit DAC, and I really only need to output um, uh, four to five volts, okay? And um, I don't need anything more than a few volts, and I want it to be more accurate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an op amp, okay? I'm going to use an op amp, and... I'll put in some gain, and then I'll put in some offset, okay? So what I want to do is I want to change the offset of this op amp to four volts. I'm gonna set this to four volts. So now it's gonna start at four volts instead of zero, and then I can go up and down from there. So the uh, the DAC is going to output zero to five volts, okay? And I want it to output zero to one volt, and that'll be added to this four volts, okay? And so really, I, I need to have a division of uh, five, okay? Instead of zero to five volts, I want zero to one volts. So I could have, uh, say, uh, 5K here and, 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 uh, and 1K, 1K here. So I'm going to divide... I'm going to make this smaller, and then I'm going to offset it up. So, uh, so I decided to do that. So that's that's the board that I wanted to design. Okay. So what did I end up doing? Uh, here's the schematic, and uh, these these are the uh, uh, HC five ninety five. These are the eight bit um, shift registers. So that gets me sixteen bits. Okay, so that's there. This is the Arduino Nano. Um, this is the this is the OLED right here, and here's two switches. I put in an LED too. I put in some pull-ups on the uh, S S uh, I squared C lines, and uh, I'm gonna have. Uh, 13.8 volts coming in here here and I'm going to have this as a uh, an 05 regulator a 70 78 
7805 regulator to take, get me down to five volts. So this is real standard stuff. I'm gonna have a protection diode here and also drop the voltage a bit. All right, so here's the, here's the maybe the harder part. Um, this is my, my DAC, D to A, uh, D to A converter, and it's gonna output on this, on this pin here. And that's going to go into my um, uh, op amp, okay? And let's see, I think I need to make this 5K instead of 10K. And here's the 1K. And then I need a 4-volt uh, uh, reference, okay? And I want everything to be stable. So I've decided to use a, uh, uh, a TL431, okay? And... Uh, normally it would output two and a half volts, but if you put a divider on it, then you can output four volts. And so I've, I've added a little section here so I can get four volts. And I've done a little trick here as well. Instead of having one potentiometer that would go all the way up and down, make this thing go between zero and five volts, I really only need it to, to wiggle right around four volts as a fine tune. So I put in a 10K here and a 5K here, and that will allow me a little better adjustability. Uh, for the five volts, uh, if this is like a 10 turn pot or something like that. So anyway, uh, uh, there you go. So um, I did lay it out and this is what it's going to look like. The, the board is going to be the same size as, uh, as this thing. All right. And uh, let's see, it goes this way actually. Um, and the connectors are going to be the same, same connectors that I have. I've already desoldered them here. I'm going to reuse them on this board. So I've taken the connectors off of this board. I'll put them onto this board and everything is spaced exactly the same it was. And this is the same size and everything. Um, so basically this is my, um, my Nano here. This is my little op amp circuit, my TL431 here. This is my D to A converter. This is where the voltage comes out that goes to the VCO. Um, here's my five volt regulator. And then I put on, like I said, I put on a display and some switches for debugging and other, maybe other projects and stuff. I've just, I've just added this cause it was, it was simple to do. All right. So, uh, through the magic of, uh, PCB way, uh, they've been donating PC boards to the channel. Um, uh, they donated me some boards for this project and, uh, here they are. So it took about a week and I uh, have these nice boards. Um, so these should look about the same. Here's where my display goes. Uh, yeah, so let's see. It's uh, the same size, right? It's uh, hopefully the same size. Yeah, so there you go. It goes on just about like that, right? And if you take a look at the radio, back out here a little bit. The uh, board's going to sit in here just like this and you can see the board board fits like a glove. Okay and this is held in with two screws. There's a two screws here and two screws here and I've, I've added these little sections here to match that screw spacing and then I'll machine a little right angle block so I'll have one screw going down and one screw coming in from the side so it'll be a little one screw up one screw sideways and uh, I've removed the solder mask so when those uh, little aluminum blocks get, get put on there, they will make a contact to the copper uh, shield, right, to the, to, to the, uh, to the, to the uh, ground uh, on this board. It's all a solid pour of, uh, of ground, and they will make contact to the board here, so it should have really, really good shielding. Um, I did go ahead and put in all those little capacitors, <laughs> just like this one, this one had. I don't think I'm going to use them, but I did, I did just for completeness. I've, I've put a whole bunch of little point, point one capacitors there if I want to load them in or not. Um, see if I need them. I don't think so. Um, so yeah, so that'll go in like that. Uh, these connector, these two connectors will talk to the, oops. These two connectors will talk to the display. This connector brings power onto the board. Um, and brings five volts to the front panel. Okay, so the, the five volts generated with this board it was the one that supplied five volts to the front panel, so that's necessary. Um, and then this connector back here will be the one that uh, this one uh, used to go here, 
and that will feed the uh, VCO voltage here. Now what this board doesn't have is any way of measuring the frequency out of the VCO. I, I, I want to be able to prototype that first before I commit it to a PC board. Um, and I might just tack it onto this one. There's a whole bunch of... Uh, whenever I design a board, I always try to make sure it's use, useful for other things. So my Nano uh, doesn't use all of the pins. And so all the unused pins I brought to these two, these two headers here. And so I can, uh, I can expand on it later. So those are available on the board to, to add a, a piggyback board onto this one. Um, so yeah, there we go. That's the state of, uh, state of this project. Um, the next thing to do is to um, do all the surface mount work here. Um, you know, uh, oops, I'm sorry. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me uh, about doing surface mount. And uh, I do hear, hear you guys. And uh, I have had some videos in the past where I show how I do surface mount and stuff. But I think in the future I will do a special video uh, just just on surface mount, how to do it by hand, how to do it by hot plate, how to do it by oven, you know, all of the ways that I've done it in the past. Um, I'll try to do one video all about surface mount parts. And so if at any time anybody ever asks me a question again, I can just point to that video and say, here, watch this. Um, so it's a little bit uh, self-serving as well. Um, there's a bit of copper removed here also. Um, I mean, um, uh, a solder mask removed here, so I have access to the copper for the uh, uh, the uh, three thermal regulator. Um, I, I don't think I will need a heat sink. I might, but um, a lot of times you don't need a heat sink if you can contact the ground and then the ground acts as a heat sink. So there's a whole bunch of copper over here that could act as a heat sink if, it, if, the, if the heat can wick out over there. So yeah, we'll see. I don't think this board's going to draw a lot of current, so probably can just get away without needing, a, without needing one. I can use my thermal camera, see how things are heating up. There you go.